member for Port Adelaide. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we rise very enthusiastically to talk about this matter for public importance. And in opening, can we say, can we reiterate how proud Labor is of its record in government on renewable energy? Yeah. Over six years, its record was extraordinary. We became, under Labor as a nation, one of the world leaders in renewable energy. Over our six years in government, we went from a position of there being 7,400 households in Australia with solar panels on their roofs to 1.2 million, million households freed from the shackles of the electricity grid, a democratic revolution. Wind power in Australia tripled over the course of our six years in government. We became a world leader in utility-scale deployment of renewable energy. In just 2013, we approved in government the largest PV solar farm in the Southern Hemisphere and the largest wind farm in the Southern Hemisphere. Jobs in the renewable energy sector over a six-year period tripled. A period including the global financial crisis, jobs in this sector tripled. And, uh, and unsurprisingly, carbon pollution levels from one of the most emissions intensive electricity sectors in the world started to reduce for the first time in history. In just one year, 2012 2013, carbon pollution levels from the electricity sector, responsible for fully one third of Australia's pollution footprint, went down by 7.5%. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Speaker, billions of dollars of investment flowed into Australia through this renewable energy revolution. In 2013, the, the leading index on investment around the world in this industry, the Ernst & Young Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index, rated Australia as one of the top four destinations for renewable energy investment in the world, up with the powerhouses of China, the United States and Germany. This government's record could not be more different if they tried, and they have tried very hard. could not be more different. Only two contributions have been seen in energy policy from this government, a regular refrain that coal is good for humanity and attack after attack after attack on the renewable energy industry. And they did not waste much time starting. In spite of the fact that the former Prime Minister, Prime Minister Abbott, promised at the 2010 and the 2013 election to keep the existing renewable energy target in place. After another infamous radio interview with Alan Jones—I don't know what Alan does to them before they go on air—but after another infamous radio interview, Mr Abbott walked away from that six-year commitment of the Liberal Party and sought to abolish the renewable energy target. Unsurprisingly, investment confidence collapsed. In just one year, investment in this industry collapsed by 88 per cent. Thousands of jobs were lost. We plummeted in the investor rankings. As I know my friend the Assistant Shadow Minister will talk about, we went down to number 39 as spenders in renewable energy, a country with the best renewable resources—solar, wind, wave, geothermal—in the world, we plummeted to 39. Now, we've finally restored a bipartisan position around the renew renewable energy target. Pollution in the meantime went up by 5 per cent in the electricity sector in just two years. Generation in brown coal, the heaviest polluting form of electricity generation, increased by 10 per cent under Prime Minister Abbott and Prime Minister Turnbull. And that was followed by a series of attacks on the Clean Energy Finance Corporation an arena which I'm glad Labor has resolved. But still we have no renewable energy policy beyond 2020. And to most observers, this simply boggles the mind. A country with the resources that we have naturally, with the minds and the innovative businesses that we have ready to invest, ready to continue to push the envelope in efficiency and effectiveness of renewables technology, it boggles the mind that a government that talks about jobs and growth a government that talks about innovation, a government that talks about open, being open for business, has turned its back so squarely against this industry. Because across the world, a wave of tens and tens of billions of dollars of investment and jobs is sweeping every nation, every one of those more than 150 nations that have a renewable energy target. Last year, Mr. Speaker, for the first time in history, Investment in renewable energy exceeded the combined investment in coal power, gas-fired power, hydropower and nuclear power, and it will never be different. 
China built 50 gigawatts of renewable energy in 2014 and built another 50 gigawatts in 2015. For context, that's the size of Australia's entire electricity system. Last year, we were fairly happy with the fact that we added one gigawatt of solar to Australia's electricity system. The United Kingdom, where the sun shines, as far as I can tell, three days a year, <laughs> added four gigawatts. Such is the loss of investment confidence under this government in this industry. Now, people held out some hope that things would change with the change of Prime Minister, a great sense of hope. There were some mixed signals. There was a back down by the new Prime Minister on the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Mr Turnbull praised South Australia as a leader on clean energy very openly during the election campaign, and we finally did reach an agreement over recent weeks to preserve the work of the Renewable Energy Agency. But the last fortnight for the Prime Minister has been a shocker. It's been a shocker. What happened in South Australia was an unprecedented weather event, an unprecedented event. People will have seen the photos where the winds and the tornadoes tore down 23 extraordinarily large and robust steel transmission towers, tripping generation in the state. Now, the Deputy Prime Minister gave us the benefit of his deep understanding of electrical engineering and meteorology. And in the middle of the storm, while emergency services workers were still putting themselves in danger's way to protect the South Australian community, decided he'd play some politics. Decided he played some politics. There used to be a protocol that said you don't play politics while people are in danger's way, while the emergency services personnel are still doing their work. The Army was doing their work in, uh, in the member for Wakefield's electorate. I'm sure he'll talk about it. He gave us the benefit of his conspiracy theories. It was all about intermittency. It was all about the wind blowing too hard for the wind generators to keep blowing. Well, frankly, Mr Speaker, it's just rubbish. It's just rubbish. It's been made very clear by people who even know more about this thing than the Deputy Prime Minister, if that's uh, possible to believe. The chief scientist said at the end of last week, after the delivery of the, of the energy market operators report, the chief scientist, uh, Dr Alan Finkel, said if you had a natural gas generator there and the voltage was collapsing and the frequency was collapsing, that natural gas generator would have taken itself off the grid just as rapidly as the wind farms had taken themselves off as well. AGL, uh, the largest coal fleet in Australia, not just a renewable energy company, said AGL has safely run its wind turbines in South Australia for the past eight years and is confident that wind generation does not degrade the reliability of the electricity system. Mr Speaker, this is just a premeditated attack by the Deputy Prime Minister on renewable energy. And given this man's approach to climate and energy policy for more than a decade, we would not be surprised. The real concern, though, is it was echoed by the Prime Minister. It was echoed by the Prime Minister. Now, we've been alive. We've been alive on this side of the House to the challenges involved in our energy system, the need to decarbonise it, the need to ensure that there's a good, orderly replacement of the coal fleet that is, frankly, getting too old to continue to operate for much longer, and the challenge involved in generation becoming much more distributed. But this is an opportunity as well. Only in the last few hours, the Queensland government about the target, the renewable energy target that it has for 2030 that the Prime Minister has described as unrealistic and unachievable, released a report, an independent report, that said that that target would lead to $6 billion in new investment in that state, more than 6,000 new jobs every year over the decade from 2020 to 2030, and with no impact on the reliability of the system and no impact on prices, echoing the conclusions even of the review panel that former Prime Minister Abbott set up to review the national renewable energy target. Renewable energy is not just cleaner. Increasingly, it will be the cheapest form of electricity available and a form of electricity in which Australia has a competitive advantage. Bloomberg New Energy Finance only released a report in recent weeks showing that the levelised cost of solar power in Australia is substantially lower than that of America, that of Europe, that of China and that of India. This government needs to recognise the transition is underway. The Deputy Prime Minister might not like it, but the transition is happening in any event. This government needs to shake off the ideology and sit down and apply its mind to some serious transition policy that secures Australia's energy system into the future. Yeah.